Hello everyone. Welcome to Nirja Education. This is class 8th science lesson number 2 microorganism friend or foe. This is part 2 video. Before seeing this video go through my part 1 video then only you will get the connectivity. At the same time please subscribe our channel Nirja Education. Don't forget to press the bell icon as well like button. Now this is the continuation of the major type of microorganism that is next we are going to discuss fungi. Fungi singular it is called a fungus. It is a plant like structure but it is non green in color. It looks like a plant only but it is non greenish color. Why because it does not contain chlorophyll. So chlorophyll is absent in fungi. It look like a plant I told because it having the shape like stem, roots etc. That is the reason we are telling fungi is a plant like structure. But only one thing is absent that is what chlorophyll. So we can tell it is a non green plant. Absence of chlorophyll pigment. So that is the reason fungi cannot make their own food. They can't make their own food. So of course they can depend on others for food. So they can lead two different type of nutrition. One is saprophytic nutrition or some of the fungi are lead parasitic nutrition. What is mean by saprophytic nutrition? Saprophytic nutrition means the organism they can derive the food from dead and decaying matter. So they derive the food, they taken the food from dead and decaying matter of animal or plant material. So dead and decaying matter say they can take the food. Those organisms are called saprophytes. That nutrition is called saprophytic nutrition. Example mushroom or mold. These two are example of saprophytic. Second one is parasitic mode of nutrition. Parasitic mode of nutrition means here the fungi take the food from other living organism. So they can derive the food from other living organism. That living organisms are called host. So instead of taking food they will give harmful effect to the living organism. They will not give any kind of benefit. They will take the food. The fungi will take the food. But instead of that they will give the harmful effect to the particular living organism. Example penicillin aspergillus. You can look at the image you will see that is that mushroom aspergillus and penicillin. Here this fungi are some of the fungi are unicellular means the entire body is made up of single cell. Example yeast and rhizobus. It is called a bread mold. Some of the fungi are multicellular they have many cells example aspergillus penicillin mushroom etc now here the mushroom we can see our naked eye mold we can see our naked eye but that rhizobus and yeast we can't see clearly our naked eye rhizobus we can call as a bread mold suppose if you are keeping a bread for dark place, damp place, after 2-3 days a greenish color appearance on the surface of the bread. That greenish color appearance is called rhizobus. So that is present only on the decaying bread. So that is why it is also called bread mold. So the yeast and bread mold we can see clearly under the microscope because we can't see clearly in our naked eye. So we need to see under the microscope. Where the fungi is present means mostly it is present in dam and dark places. It needs some moisture content at the same time chlorophyll is not present. So it will present in the dark places only. Next we are going to discuss about algae. Algae is singular we can say it is a alga. Alga also, algae also a simple unicellular or multicellular organism. Some of the algae are unicellular, maybe it is the body is present in single cell. Some of the algae are multicellular. Example of unicellular chlamydomonas, you can see the picture. It is a unicellular 
algae. Spirogera, these all are example of multicellular algae. This algae looks like a plant like structure. It contains green color pigment that also chlorophyll is present. So the fungi does not have, does not contain chlorophyll but it is a plant like structure. But algae also plant like structure but it contain chlorophyll. So with the help of chlorophyll they can trap the sunlight and prepare their own food by the process of photosynthesis. They can make their own food by the process of photosynthesis. So that the algae are called autotrophic organism or autotrophs. That nutrition is called autotrophic nutrition. I hope you have understood. Next, where does the algae lives? Occurrence of algae, mostly algae live in an aquatic area, either freshwater or marine water. So, greenish appearance on the outer surface of the water. So, algae is called as a grass of water. You look at the picture, this way it looks. That is the reason algae is called a grass of water. It is most, some, of, some of the algae are present in the damp places forming slippery green layer on the moist soil or moist rock surface. Excessive growth of algae in ponds, lakes, water reservoirs is called algal bloom. Suppose already I told it is a grass of water. If the growth is more, it make a mat like appearance that is called algal bloom. So algal bloom means you look at the picture, the entire pond or lake is covered by algae. So this is called algal bloom. So this is happen excessive growth of algae. Due to this, what happened? The growing of algae cover the water surface, utilize the dissolved oxygen and release more amount of carbon dioxide. So that water is not fit for, unfit for human being as well as aquatic animals. So slow and steadily what will happen? The organisms are not getting oxygen, they will die. So due to that, the water will produce so much smell. That process is called eutrophication. Eutrophication means unfit of drinking water. Eutrophication. Next one is this algae mainly filament like structure or branched shape like structure. They do not have separate stem, root, leaves etc. But it contain only chlorophyll, but it does not having like a, does not contain uh, like plant, root, stem, leaf, these all are absent. That's why it is look like a clumps like appearance. It is a clumsy appearance. So that this algae is called a thallus. Thallus means we can't differentiate roots, stem, leaves. So that category is called as thallus. So the algae is come under the category of Thalophyta. You will study in your higher classes what is Thalophyta. Thalophyta is algae are come under the category of Thalophyta. We can't differentiate it, the body parts like stem, roots and leaves. I hope you have understood. Thank you. Have a nice day.